What's up? It's your bestie Nikki. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a series where I'm going to be telling you guys some story time about my work experience. But today we're going to be talking about something specific that I wish somebody would have showed me and talked to me about, girl. Definitely grab your wine, snacks, everything you need and get ready for story time. So along with your wine and snacks, make sure you grab your notepad and your pen. Bring up your notes on your phone because Y'all need to listen, okay? Today, we are going to be talking about the importance of contractual agreements, why it's important to read the fine print, how doing that saved my from multiple occasions of which we're gonna be talking about today. So we're gonna start out with the shortest story pertaining to this issue, so let's get into it. It was like five or six years ago, I was already creating content, you know, cause the bitch is old, no, I'm just kidding. This is exactly what I'm talking about. When I say that a lot of the earlier content creators really paved a way, not just because, oh, we did it first, or oh, we've been on here longer, no, because people tried to scam the sh out of us because our job wasn't a real job. Now it's a completely different playing field, like you have tax professionals that know what content creating is now. Obviously this is very important because this is how you like, you know, get houses and cars and loans and like, I don't know, like live your life. But it also became difficult for anybody who is trying to help you with your business. Literally nobody knew what they were doing. And this is the perfect example. So at this point in my career, I definitely believe in management, manager, girl back in the Zay, I got scammed out of a lot of money and I had to fight with them, get my money back and certain things. And they went on to try to steal from me in the future. So if you guys wanna hear about that story, you already know what's to do. Fast forward, my channel like just had blown up. Like I didn't even know what I was doing. So all of a sudden, brands start coming out of the woodwork, emails, you know, whatever, like all of the businessy type shares, the difference between working with brands directly or working with like talent, companies where they will be the middleman between you and the brand and they will do all of the negotiating with you. They take a cut of what the brand is paying them. Um, so essentially they are a middleman, okay? So this had to do with the talent agency girl. So one day comes around, right? And I get an email and it's from this girl and she's like, hey, we would like love to help connect you with brands. So we do all the negotiating for you, all of the perks, all of the highlights of having somebody else do this inner portion for you. And it is a lot of work. It's a lot of negotiating. It's a lot of going back and forth and signing contracts and reading fine print. So she's like, hey, um, connect with me. I'm gonna like present you and what you do to the clients or the brands. And then like, I will handle everything and I'll bring everything to you to finalize it. And then dun, dun, you have brand deals. And I was like, oh my God, okay, great. I'm really excited. And she was like, hey, do you wanna work with this brand? And I actually really enjoyed the brand myself. I thought about it for a while and I was like, you know what? I would love to collaborate with them. Let's do it. So she sends me the deliverables. Uh, that's not what they caught it back then. They were like, this is what the f you're supposed to do. So she sends me a brief of sorts to look over and then she sends me a contract agreement. I am just like doing what I love and I'm just like rolling with it, girl. My main peeps, you know, my home skillets, the closest people to me, they know about this awesome opportunity that I'm so excited about. So I'm telling David, I'm telling my mom and everything and the contract comes in and I'm so ready to sign it. My mom was like, Skirt! wait a minute. <laughs> You need to realize that this is not like something that you didn't earn. So she basically built up my confidence saying like, don't feel like this is so out of your league that, you know, you don't read the five print. You get so excited that you just, you know, oversee all of the things that are expected of you. That's not how we gonna start out with this, okay? Everything to me looked absolutely fine and I was completely good with all of it, including the rate. Now, now this brand was trying to pay me, girl, they were trying to pay me way more than I was used to at that time. I'm going line by line, girl, and I look at that rate, I had never been paid that amount before in my career. And I was like, <laughs> give it the okay. And my mom was like, okay, let me see it. And so she reads over and she was like, wow, okay, all right. So she goes through it two, three times. And she's like, I don't see any issues with it. You know, if you're comfortable, go ahead, sign it. I think it's good. And I was like, all right, cool. Everything's in motion from that point forward, girl. You have an agreement and you have expectations out of you. So you better get to work, okay? Fast forward, filming goes great. I love working with this brand. Everything goes out good and smooth. The video posts and it does really well. And I'm like, both myself, the brand, happy as can be, okay? Everything's all good. So this is the part where I'm learning all of the administrative portion of doing this job, not just getting on camera and editing like accounting and shit. So I'm like, you know, visiting my corporate world mentality and getting invoices out and stuff. And it comes time for my money. 
Why do I get an email? We got a problem. Oh, okay. I read that email while she's sitting up here saying that there was a mistake and that the rate that was on the contract was more than the rate that she wanted to give me. This was the amount that I wanted you to, uh, to agree to. There was a typo on the contract. So we're just gonna go ahead and pay you the amount that we wanna pay you and not what's on the contract because you see there was a typo. So she starts referencing past emails and she was like, I thought that we had agreed to like this ballpark amount. And I was like, yeah. That's what we agreed to. But and however, the contract that was sent to me for my signature, that's the amount that was on there. That's the amount that was agreed to. I don't know what, I, I, in any business that you're in, do not ever take shit personal. It is business because these people don't care. And the minute that I let her know, nah, I'm not falling for the okie doke, okay? I don't care about a typo because you know what? You wouldn't care about a typo if it was the other way around. If I just fail to do my part in any way, shape or form, that contract says it's null and void at that point. So it would be bad if I didn't hold up my end of the contract that is signed. Why are you sitting up here telling me that you can't pay me the amount that's on the contract that I signed. What are you talking about? The payment goes through. I got the money. I got it. I got paid, okay? Accounting did what they were supposed to do from the contract. I get that money, girl. This girl is freaking out. Why she try to threaten me with litigation? You don't send this amount back that exceeds what we had agreed on before the contract. We're gonna take you to court. Ma'am, mm, okay, um, I've worked so many attorneys. I have looked over so many legal documents in my lifetime. Girl, please. Girlfriend, girlfriend, I know you are not sitting up here trying to threaten me and telling me that you're gonna take me to court using the contract that you and I both sign with this amount on it. Go ahead, girl, please be my guest. I didn't lose a week of sleep, let me tell you. I sent an email back, go ahead, do what you feel is necessary because I have no problem. I talked to some of my colleagues about it from an attorney's office that I used to work at and they were like, um, there's nothing they can do about that. Like whatever contract you sign, that's what they have to adhere to and you have to adhere to that as well. So like, whatever. She stood down very quickly after that. On to the next story time, which is a bit longer and a bit more enthralling, okay? Now this one got a little messy. All of my OG Glamazons remember where I used to live and I call it my shitty, shitty apartment, even though it does hold a very special place in my heart, but this is where we were coming from grassroots, bitch, okay? This is where we were on the come up. Called it our shitty, shitty apartment because we constantly had mold issues, leaking issues. We had a uh, ant infestation one time. Lots of robberies were happening. Grand Theft Auto was happening in the parking lot. One of our neighbors got caught making meth in his apartment. He tried to jump from a third story balcony. Girl, it was a mess. But it was all that we could afford. You already know the dealio. So this was right after David and I first started dating and I was living downtown when he and I first met, which most, most of you guys know about that. And he used to live in the burbs. So we used to like debate all the time. Is it better to live in the city? Is it better to live in the suburbs? And I was a city girl, throw and throw. But you know, as time went on, it was hard for us to take Julian to school, for us to have David's big ass work truck downtown, the parking cost so we just decided you know what we're gonna get another apartment so we end up getting into this shitty shitty apartment at this time we got that two bedroom two bathroom for nine hundred dollars a month I know unheard of, I know. So that's why we were real quick to snatch it up each, real quick. This was a huge deal. I was like signing a lease with my mans. And then of course, as time went on, we started having issues, whether it be with parking, leaks, like I said, all of the internal issues. When you live on the first floor of an apartment and you have like three or four floors above you, girl, everything that they do comes trickling down. And it was a whole last mess. We handled it though, why? cause that rent price was good, okay? The worst thing that happened while I lived there that almost made me fight somebody, I'm not even kidding. We lived there for five years total, okay bitch? A long ass time. But on like the fourth year, David and I finally were able to upgrade our car and that's when we got our Jeep. So David and I go to the dealership, we pick out the Jeep and at the time the dealership had um, like a trial period where you can take the car home for like a two to three day period and then bring it back to the dealership and let them know how you liked it, do you wanna buy it, That all that, right? So it's like a, literally a trial period, okay? So we have to give the dealership all of our information. <laughs> Ended up going to the dealership on like a Friday, okay? So we take the Jeep and they're like, you know, you have it over the weekend and then 
then call us on Monday, let us know if you wanna go forward with the loan, okay, to, to get our new court. So anyways, we do that. And it is so exciting. This was like the first big purchase that David and I made together, okay? And it was like right outside one of our windows so I could keep an eye on it or whatever. Got our whole plan to keep the Jeep safe and like test it out before we buy it. Okay, cool. Tell me why, just a few hours later, by the next morning, I wake up early. It's like seven, eight in the morning. Girl, why I look out my window and the Jeep is gone? Gone. Why is it that at every apartment you got that nosy old man that just sees and knows everything? All of a sudden we hear, it got towed. An old man on his balcony with his coffee just looking down at us like you silly, silly children. We can have visitors for up to three days. You have to go get a visitor's pass every time. Every time. You have to go get a visitor's pass from the leasing office, okay? Now the Jeep didn't have a visitor's pass because the office was closed over the weekend. Girl, Monday comes around. Girl, long story short, they had, the towing company had done come through there and just by their rules, if you don't see a sticker, tow that bitch. And they towed this brand new off the lot vehicle. There was no way for me to get a sticker on it because the office was closed. I tried to call and I tried to email y'all asking for a visitor's pass because I knew that I was gonna be car shopping this weekend. I knew it. And guess who got back to me? Ain't nobody. So whose problem is that? They wanted me to park it, that you should have parked it in the leasing office parking lot. Like, you know, nobody would get towed from there. And I was like, listen to me. From the leasing office to our actual apartment building was like half a mile. I'm not exaggerating. You were expecting me to park a brand new vehicle half a mile from where I'm gonna be at that I'm responsible for, number one. While there's a shit ton of snow, number two, and it's cold, with my eight-year-old son, so that it doesn't get towed over the weekend. This is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard of in my life. I was like, so nobody can get a new vehicle over the weekend because it's gonna get towed. I ended up having to pay to get the Jeep out. I had to pray, girl, that they didn't like damage it or anything because again, we're on a trial period. Finally, girl, they reimbursed me by crediting my account um, so that the amount that I paid to get the Jeep out would go, uh, would be credited against my rent. So I wouldn't have to pay as much rent the next month. So that's how they fixed that. I knew the girls that worked in the leasing office well enough to be like, bitch, y'all gotta help me out, okay? So I can handle that until new management came in. Of course, new management came in. Everything was a whole ass mess, okay? We start getting letters on our door saying that we have an outstanding balance that we need to come into the office for immediately and they were threatening eviction. If there's one thing that I don't play about, it's my basic bills, okay? I'm not about to play with my bills. I will pay off all my bills before I have any fucking fun. I will eat ramen noodles. I'm not exaggerating. Every single important, mandatory, our responsibility type shit will get paid before anything else, I don't care. I don't play that. What y'all talking about, Willis? Oh, I was so fast. I was so fast. You're not about to threaten me with eviction. You're not about to do that. And you gonna embarrass me and put the big ass letter all over my fucking door on bright ass red paper? Like, what? We meet with the manager and we sit down and we go over everything. And I was like, we've never been late on our rent. We've always been early. I don't play that. So can you explain this? She tries to say that we weren't charged the whole amount in months past because they didn't have good bookkeeping with the previous management company. And I was like, uh, almost $700 that they were saying that we owed them. And I was like, ma'am, ma'am, be, be for real. Every single time rent is due, um, we get a statement in our mailbox every single time they hand delivered them. And it tells you what you owe that month for rent. Little of me, I love filing shit away. Um, I was always taught not to fucking throw away documentation and this is exactly the reason why. You're saying from this month to this month that the previous management company was not charging us enough rent, which I completely disagree with, but that's fine. Um, I'm not here for he said, she said battle. I know how this works. So why don't I provide you the documentation? Because as you know, there are monthly statements, so I have no problem. You're saying from this month to this month, I have those filed away, the hard copies that were put into my mailbox with the check numbers associated with each one of our rent payments. So we can definitely bring that in tomorrow because whatever was on our statement is what we paid. Why this say, well, it's not always correct on the statement and you sh you have to call to make sure that that total is the actual total. I got a call to, 
you have two options. You can either try to fight, or try to figure it out there and then, and like trying to negotiate and leave in that moment with an answer. Or you can do what I did. Make a point. Y'all know, don't forget who you're talking to. I can be petty as You wanna sit here and tell me that I should have called? Even, it doesn't matter that they put it on a statement. You gotta call just in case they have some last minute fees. You never know. The next day, I called in the morning during my morning coffee at my job. I called during my lunch hour. I called during my 15 minute break. To top it all off, I leave work early. And I talk to my boss and I let him know there's some things going on in my leasing office. I really gotta figure it out. He said, go handle your business. I said, thank you very much. Peace out, homie. I head over to that leasing office. I stand outside them steps right outside the doors. I step up to the doors, all made of glass. I'm calling. I, in this moment, I am calling the leasing office that I am standing outside of right now. I just wanted to see what would happen. Parking lot empty. Lobby empty. I open the front door. Phone's still ringing. Not a person in sight. But you know what I do see? Three different phones in the front area with all the desks. Three different phones ringing, but all of them are on silent. No audible ringing. They're just like, the, the lights are flashing. I am sitting there just looking so lost. And I am, I'm just being, I'm exaggerating everything. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so weird. Wow, oh my God, like the, the whole place must not be working. That's crazy. So I'm getting loud because nobody's fucking out there. And all of a sudden, hi, can I, can I help you? Boop. I put my phone on speaker. I'm literally calling the office right now. You guys just have your phones on silent or what? It was, uh, a lot of my staff is on lunch and they usually put their phones on silent when they go on lunch. It's 3.30. Your office closes at 5.30. Now keep in mind, this is the same lady that we had just talked to that told me that I should be calling in to double check the total before I pay for my rent. It just might not be the right total. So I'm looking at her, she's looking at me. And I'm looking at her, she's looking at me and I'm like, your move, home skillet, what you going? I end the call and I show her all the previous calls I had been making all day. And I was like, you wanna see last week? You wanna see the week before? From the mail room, there was another one coming out from like the computer room. The rest of the other employees just start showing up out of the back rooms. I don't know where they were they were at, girl, but they sure as hell weren't over here doing their damn job. And they're like, oh, hi, how can I help you? Like, is everything okay? And you could tell that the manager was so pissed that she's like looking at them like, I will talk to you in a minute. I was like, yep, get them together. Get them together. I was like, so with that in mind, I would like you to reconsider the amount that you're saying that my husband and I owe for our unit. Because as you can see, there's, there's absolutely no way, whether it's phone or email, which I have proof that I have emailed you guys for this information as well and have never gotten a response. That's fine. It's fine. We will cancel it out. You're starting at a zero balance. It's fine. Girl, she was tired of hearing from my and I was like, okay, great. Wonderful. I'm glad that we're on the same page. You let me know if you have any other questions. You guys have a great day. When it comes to petty behavior, you have to expect that some people might just be petty as well, okay? And they might wanna get you back at a later date. And that's exactly what they tried to do in this situation. See, they got mad. They got mad because they didn't get no extra money and they couldn't do this whole, well, the old management and the new management and like, this is just what it is. No, I'm not just gonna go off of that. I'm not, no. Fast forward and it comes time for us to renew our lease. We lived here for five years. I know exactly how the lease renewal goes, about how much our rent goes up per year and they were whole ass tripping. Y'all, they tried to increase our rent by 300 dollars i know you're lying back into the leasing office we go <laughs> hi we're basically besties at this point can we have a discussion here we go again where we're david and i are just being blindsided these are the new rules and the new policies and you know now we have shared electricity and shared water and it's all in your leasing agreement that you sign now at this point in time this new management have been here for like two years I don't give a damn. I've been here for five. The lease that we signed, and she said, yep. Sudden, they wanted the entire building that we were staying in to have shared water expense. I had people that have families of like seven and eight in like a two bedroom apartment. I'm not 
kidding. I didn't agree to that. He's like, oh yes, you did. So we got, we started getting an attitude with each other and I was like, no ma'am, we did not. I read the fine print and I know exactly what was in that lease agreement. And we've been doing just fine for five years. And now all of a sudden y'all take over and we got all kinds of issues and, and misunderstandings. You're not going to find our signatures on anything that agrees to that. I'm, I'm sorry. I would love to see it. I, like I said, I'm not here to go off of he said, she said. It's a waste of time, girl. Let me see it. Let me see the receipts. Let me see the proof. that we agree to all of this? Print it out. Our printer isn't working today. I'm so sorry. We have a repair guy coming out tomorrow. Every tenant gets their own copy in their email, so maybe you should go back in your email and pull it up. I think that's a fantastic idea. Okay. You know what? You're right. For sure, for sure. I find our latest lease agreement, it's the same lease agreement that's sent every single year and the same day of the year and it's sent automatically. It's from like a docu sign, I print the whole thing out. I sit down at one of their big tables out in the big lobby, set down my purse and at this time I had one of those big laptop Michael Kors purses, bitch. I'm not here to play no games. I wait a few minutes, she comes out with the lease agreement that she has in her system. This lease agreement, blank. This is the template. You know, after you look over it, if you have any questions, you know, I can go into your account. And if you wanna see your actual lease, that's fine. And I was like, oh, no need. I have my actual lease. I set it side by side, right next to each other. And I looked up at her and I said, I'm just gonna do a few comparisons. That's all. Where I'm sitting is directly outside of this woman's office. And when I tell you, sweating bullets, sweating. So I have my headphone in and I'm talking to my mom and I'm going page by page and I, I'm literally looking at it and I am like smirking and I'm going from my lease to their lease and on my lease to their lease. And when I tell you not a thing is the same, not the format, not the font, not the amount of pages, not the nothing, not mine. Problem. Good job, class. Why? Because this is the one that has my signature and my husband's signature on it. Not this janky one right here. I don't know what the hell this is. I had one of my attorney friends on lock and he was like, I will help you go through the documents if they continue to give you an issue. Because y'all, I was like worried about this every day at my job. And I was like, this is my place to live. Like, this is not a small deal. So I'm making all the comparisons and I'm talking to my mom and I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna have to go ahead and tell him this is not right. I don't know if this lady was just overhearing my conversation or just looking at my face or what. She comes out and she goes, hey. And she puts both of her hands on both of the leases and she goes, don't worry about it. There have been some issues with updating the lease agreements that are sent out automatically. But again, we apologize for the confusion, but you, you don't have to worry about any of that. Can I get that in writing? And that's what she did. I didn't want them to give me any issues when we decided to move out and they sure did not. They were very um, nice. They gave us our deposit back. They didn't give us any issues and they were like, okay, bye, okay, bye. And I'm sure they did because I was a pain in the I read the fine print and you are not about to convince me that I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to what my signature is on, girl. You're not about to do that. In some of these situations, sometimes I felt bad. Like the other girl where she was like, my job is on the line. And I understand that, but you were very quick to threaten me with litigation. And do you understand the type of stress that puts a person under? Like you didn't care about me. So why would I care about you in this situation when it was a mistake on your part? If it's a mistake, just say that. But don't come at me just firing at me and trying to tell me that you gonna take me to court girl take me to court now now we ain't friends that is my lesson for today read everything that you sign i don't care if you ain't a good reader i don't care if you don't like reading one of the biggest lessons that i've learned so far in my life is that people depend on you not knowing your shit. they depend on it you got to look out for yourself girl ain't nobody gonna do it for you and you got to know that you know that you know what you're talking about uh, there are going to be a lot of opportunities that come into your life and a lot of different decisions that you're going to be making there's a difference between being excited and being prepared my love don't let your excitement cloud your vision metaphorically and literally beach like you need to see what's going on so that nobody takes advantage of you these were the moments that i was able to to stand up for myself, but best believe there were moments that I got scammed too. It's a part of life, but if I can save somebody from being scammed or just like not getting this lesson later in life like I did, I would love to do that because they will be very fast to be like, look, your signature is on here. So like we could take you to court, they'll be real fast. 
and they will not have any mercy. I love y'all. If you guys have any questions or if you guys have any of your own stories where you've been through something similar, let me know down below because I know it ain't just me. You already know what to do with that like button, a little tippity tap if you found it helpful or amusing or both. Definitely subscribe to my channel because you're going to see me a lot more often. I love y'all so much and I will see your fine ass in my next video. Peace out, y'all. Don't be getting scammed, girl. Don't be getting scammed.